Hello, welcome to Energy 142, class number 6. We're going to start talking about the adjusted baseline in this class. And just a little note before we start is if you're looking for the lecture for class number 5, there is none. There was just a quiz. And that's located on Blackboard. So if you uh, are looking for that, uh, go ahead to Blackboard and just take that quiz. You'll have to review some uh, pictures of some of the school um, utility analysis that you've done. So let's start with sort of the motivation. Um, so let's look at this, and I had you guys look at this in the quiz um, for um, class number five. So this is the elementary school, and this is their natural gas usage for a period of about three years. And we can see, let's look at a couple different Januaries. Here's year one, sort of, that starts with January. And here's year two. And here's year three. And then we're almost at the winter um, of this year. So we can really see that over the these, this three-year period, the natural gas use has really dropped um, from this year to this year to this year. But the big question that we have to ask ourselves is, what if this drop was just due to warmer winters? Then we really need some way to take weather into account. Because if we had um, made some energy um, upgrades, we need to be able to tell, is it, just, is it our energy upgrades that are saving us natural gas? Or is it the weather that's saving us natural gas? So the big question is, how do we take weather into account between the um, 10 and 11 winter and the 11 and 12 winter to compare the energy usage? And the answer is something called adjusted baseline. And that's really what we're going to be spending a lot of time on, because it's one of the most complex topics in this course. And But it's really important, because if you don't take weather into account, you may not realize all the um, potential savings that you're having, or you may not realize that your building's using more energy than it should. So let's think about adjusted baseline with a couple of different steps. So there's four steps. So adjusted baseline, the first thing you're going to do is choose a model. And don't worry, we're going to go through all these steps in great detail. So you choose which model to use. The second step is create a model for your baseline year. And that baseline year is going to be the first year of utility bills that you have. Um, so in, in the case of your analysis, you have three years of bills, so it's just going to be your first year, and then the year two and three are going to be after that. And then using the model from number one and the model parameters for the following years, calculate an adjusted baseline for years two and three. So we'll talk about how, what that means and how to do that. And then the big thing is, you once you have an adjusted baseline, that's basically like your weather-adjusted energy usage. You're going to compare it to the actual energy uses. And then you basically can compare apples to apples, because basically you eliminated the varying weather. And we'll see how we're going to do that. So the longest thing we're um, going to talk about is which model to use. And that's what we'll be spending um, a good bit of today's class and next class on. So let's talk first about what is modeling, basically. First, we're going to talk about something called linear modeling. So linear modeling means if you have a set of data, that we're going to say that even though it's not exactly a straight line, we're going to fit a straight line to it. So let's just say we had this data here. Um, these are data points. So you know we can see the x-axis and the y-axis. There's different data points. So you could think this could be you know, temperature on the x-axis, and this could be um, you know, CCFs, or natural gas therms, on the y-axis, something to that effect. Um, and so if we look at this sort of data set like this, what happens is, is it looks sort of like a straight line. So what we can do, and what Excel does for us, actually, is it'll put a straight line into there for us. So you can say right away, actually, Excel does this for you. It says linear fit, y. And it gives us a y equals the um, formula, the you know simple algebraic formula, y equals mx plus b. In this case, m equals 2.8286 and b equals 13.619. Now, the big thing to know here is there's another parameter here, the r squared. If you haven't nev never done linear modeling before, this is something that you may not be too familiar with. So what r squared is, basically, is it's measure of how good the fit is, so how good the line fits the data. And Excel does this for you. It, it does the best. It, it, it plots the line that's the best fit. So the best fit for this is an R squared of 0.8979. If you have, if for some reason you get a, a perfect fit where the line goes through every single point, that's going to be an R squared equal to 1. So what you're really looking for is to see how good your model is, is to get an R squared somewhere um, as close to 1 as possible. Now, that's not always going to happen, but if you have an R squared 
uh, very low, say 0.1 or 0.2, that usually means the data is not a good um, fit for linear modeling. So the closer you get to one, the better um, your linear model is going to predict um, what's going on in your building. Okay, so now that we sort of uh, went over linear modeling, there's a book chapter that I've put on Blackboard that I want you to read, and it's called, um, it's from the, the Energy Management Handbook, and it's under Learning Materials in Blackboard. This just goes over all the different types of models, linear models that we can use in utility bill analysis and, and creating an adjusted baseline. So go ahead and look at that if you'd like. And I'm going to go over some of the key points from it um, in, the in this class and next class. So these are the models that the reading goes over, and I'm, I'm going to go over most of them. So um, there's a no-adjustment constant model, the day-adjusted model, two-parameter model, three-parameter model, four-parameter model, change-point model, five-parameter model, and multivariate model. So um, the first one I'm going to go over is no-adjustment constant model. So the no-adjustment constant model is a very, very simple model. And that's why it's the first one we're going to go over. And it's somewhere where the energy use is constant over the whole time period. So this is definitely not going to be the case for the schools that you looked at. But it is true in some, in some utility meters. Um, for example, a utility meter that doesn't have any on-site heating or cooling equipment. So think about um, one, one example is lighting that just have lighting with a fixed schedule. So if you're lighting a parking lot or something from 12 a.m. to 6 or 12 or midnight to 6 a.m. every day of the year, that'll probably have a pretty fixed energy usage. And you can say that um, the energy usage is going to just equal a constant. So that's what this is. So E is the energy usage over a given time period. And in this case, it's just some fixed constant. So how it looks like in graphical form is that no matter what the temperature is, the energy usage is going to be constant. And that's going to be very different um, than any of our other models, and we'll see that coming up. But again, the main thing is, is that no matter what the temperature is, or no matter what month of year it is, or no matter what, really, the energy use is fairly constant. And again, that's the big thing to think about is, a big example is just a lighting with a fixed schedule. So then we can look at our day-adjusted model. So the day-adjusted model is similar to the um, no adjustment, which constant model, which we just went over, number one. That energy use is constant over the time period. And it works best with the building that does that not have on-site heating or cooling equipment, which we talked about there before. And again, works well with meters that just serve um, fixed schedule. The big difference here, though, is that, think about it, if you're looking at utility bills, some utility bills you know, are only 25 days, and some utility bills are 35 days, and some utility bills are 30 days. So in this case, what we're doing is we're going to normalize by the days in the billing cycle. So again, usually the billing period. So you already looked at that for task one, and you have that um, information. And then it takes the form of the energy usage equals the, that constant, the same constant we were looking at before. But we look at the days in our billing cycle um, divided by the days in the billing cycle that we looked at to get that constant. So um, you'll see this in, when, I, when I show you how to apply this in a model. But basically the idea is that if we are, let's say we have a 20 um, day billing cycle and a 30 day billing cycle, the 30 day billing cycle is going to use three halves more um, energy than the 20 day billing cycle. And that makes sense. So the big thing that I didn't say before this is that this technique can be used for any of the models. And so this is probably the first thing you want to do um, when you're building your models is to adjust um, for the day-adjusted model. And I'll go over that as well in, uh, in a future video of how you do that. So now let's look at the two-parameter model. So the two-parameter model is a little bit more complex, but not too much. So let's look at it. So the two-parameter model is appropriate for extreme climates. So if you have all heating or all cooling, and you can probably think of a climate with, that would have all heating or all cooling. And the building must also have constant control system that operates continuously. So it shouldn't be shut off at night or you know during some uh, months of the year. It should have continuous control. So this is very specific. It's not, it's not generalized at all. So that's one um, drawback of this model. So the form here. Um, is that the energy use over a certain time period equals some constant C 
plus some constant B1 times the temperature. And so um, the, an example of these two, how to get these two constants is just like when we saw linear modeling, we would put our E's, our energy use, and our temperatures in Excel, and we'd get the two constants from that best fit line that we looked at before. And, I'll, and again, I'll show you how to do that, an example of this in future videos. So how this looks on a graphical format is that, in this case, as the ambient temperature goes up, the energy usage goes up. And how much it goes up is the slope, B1. And if the ambient temperature is really cold, um, the intercept here is C. So that's the basic idea of a two-parameter model. Okay, so now we've we've covered the first three models, and those are that, and it turns out the easiest to cover. Um, other models, these other um, four models, need a balance point or change point temperature. And this is really what we're going to discuss next class because this is key to understanding um, many concepts in energy management, actually. But we really need the to know what the balance point temperature is to be able to do these models, and that's what we'll discuss next class. Thanks for listening.